Fortnite has an interesting reputation for changing things up rapidly. With all the hype around trios and the removal of duos in Arena, things are getting fierce. It's almost as if duos is dead, never to be revived. But is this true? Are duos gone for good, or are people exaggerating? Ghost Saf, a prominent and one of Fortnite's veteran players, tweeted this. So tell me, do you guys prefer duos or trios? Let me know. Trios is a really fun mode that really goes beyond a simple two-man team. And with the continuous additions of these toxic items, Fortnite seems to be really hitting the competitive scene hard and without mercy. So what's in store for us next? What's up guys, this is your host, your friend, Dan. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about something that's become very mainstream for Fortnite competitive, trios. Except this time, we aren't going to be doing analysis, but showing you guys what we think the top five trios currently are. Feel free to make your own list down below and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. So what's the difference between trios and duos other than an additional player? Well, it turns out that an extra player makes all the difference. I mean, trios seems like the perfect amount of players. Squads is a little bit too much and duos may get a little bit boring, but trios appears to be the right number. Alrighty, before we get into it, we'd like to announce that we're adding new features to our site, exclusive guide and analysis videos for our pro members. Also, ProPass now grants access to all games. We also have more free coaching passes and points for Instapro if you are a pro member, so head on over to ProGuys by clicking the link in the description below. Also, a little reminder, this is our personal top five list. We know there are many other talented trios out there, so don't feel bad if you don't see your favorites. Feel free to make your own list and compare it with ours down below. Coming in at number five, we have the very popular Tifu, 72 Hours, and Cloaksy. Now, I know what some of you might say, but let me remind you that these guys are seasoned veterans. Tifu and Cloaksy have been a tag team for a while now. They've all been playing competitively since the start and have all the experience that they need to dominate. And with 72 Hours Edition, they make for a tightly robust team. Tifu being a master at LAN events along with his partner Cloaksy are a wonder to behold. Not only have they knocked out some of the best of the best, but they have 72 hours, which is inarguably one of the most creative players around. His creative skills make it super easy for him to invent new ways to take people down. 72 hours is also a great addition due to him having a very similar experience competing at many LAN events. So now let's hop into a little bit of their gameplay style and what makes them so deserving of this top five spot. The reason this team ranks fifth is that if you've ever watched them play, their confidence and synergy work fantastically. Their combination of tactics and top tier teamwork is the most significant factor. It takes a specific type of team to perform this well at all levels. What most people don't understand is that teamwork is arguably the most significant factor in all aspects of gameplay. You could have three absolute studs pair up and still lose. Why? Teamwork is the best way to offset mechanical skill and crazy plays. Not only is their gameplay the most significant factor, but the experience that comes behind it. Having three land players who have many wins under their belt proves to be more effective than people who practice at home and do super well. I gotta say, Booga is an exception, but proof of this is many of the top players who everyone expected to do super well at the World Cup, like Stompy and Clicks, didn't even achieve half of their expectation. That's not to rip on them, I'm just saying that land experience goes a long way. With all that said, let's move on to our number four spot. All right, number four, we have one of the most underrated teams, Aspect, Animal, and Bucky FPS. All three of them are near day one scrim players and have a ton of experience that comes along with that. Aside from that, the Sentinels boys are very well known amongst the Fortnite competitive community for being some of the best players. It's just a shame that Booga decided to split from Aspect and Animal. I'm not gonna lie, I probably would have put them as the best team had they not split. What do you guys think of that? But you know, everyone has their arguments and whatnot. Anyways, despite lacking Booga, Aspect and Animal have proven time and time again that they have what it takes to compete at the highest level. If we take a look at the World Cup qualifiers, Animal and Aspect place top 20 consistently throughout every single week. They've shown consistency at the highest caliber and Bucky is not much different. Recently in trios, they've been popping off and placing top 10. In the trios event, which took place around a month ago, Booga, Animal, and Aspect placed first. This team has tremendous potential, and one of the main reasons for the split with Booga is due to streaming when they scrim. Streaming your tactics and strategy is one of the easiest ways for other players to grief or contest your spots. So I must say, I have a ton of respect for the people who stream their strategy and still end up on top. Now, one of the things that makes this trio so unique is that despite being super mechanically skilled, they also have a genius mind. They find ways to survive the early game, even in top tier lobbies, and almost always find ways to make it to end game. In fact, a recent post by one of the pro discord servers showed Animal's trio taking first place amongst many top tier players. This isn't the first time we've seen this team on top. Another interesting thing I'd point out is their teamwork and callouts is beyond the average player. 
Unlike many others who decide to call out the enemy location's whereabouts and how much damage they got off, these guys call out what they're doing at every moment of the game. That's what makes this team so dangerous. Next up at number three, Benji, Mongrel, and Mitro. This trio is notorious for all being mechanically skilled players. We've done analysis videos on these guys in the past, and they all score as top tier performers. What makes this team so formidable is their ability to dominate all ranges of fights, even at the pro level. Mongrel was one of the first Fortnite prodigies and was widely considered the best player until very recently. Mitra has a history of making outlandish and wild plays. He amazed us with his crazy plays and top tier gun skills. Benji, on the other hand, didn't perform as we expected him to at the World Cup. Regardless, he's still a fantastic player and one of the best. His talent, like Mongrel, revolves around mechanics. He's able to turn the tides in seemingly dismal fights with ease. These three combined make challenging opponents, and it's a shame they don't play actively on the NA server with some of the other pro players. I mean, wouldn't you love to see games like the World Cup more often? I know I would. So anyway, if you've ever noticed, this trio gets most of their kills off of outplaying their opponents and just brute forcing teams. This style of play does work against many opponents, including pro players, because nobody expects you to push them fiercely in specific circumstances. Now that the mech was introduced and the skill of players is rising, it's getting harder and harder for people to get kills against teams, but it's still doable as some of our favorite pros are pulling it off. Our second place champions are Booga, Clarity G, and Stretch. Now, for those who don't know, Clarity G is a professional scrim player, like Booga with tons of experience. Stretch is the same, except a little less known. Having a world champion in your team automatically bumps you up a notch. Booga is by far the best player in the world, with fast hands, incredible mechanics, and deadly shots. He's the undisputed king of Fortnite right now. We saw how prevalent his style play was at the World Cup, and now he's taken it to the next level. Some of you might be wondering why he doesn't play with his Sen team members, and that's for many potential reasons. Number one, Animal says he doesn't like when Booga streams while they scrim, which is entirely understandable, but imagine Booga coming from the World Cup and not being able to stream. Just think of the loss he endures from that. Second, some people say Animal wasn't happy with Booga's style of play. Another reason is I think that Booga wanted to be the in-game leader, and Animal is also an IGL, so there could have been a conflict of interest there. Let us know in the comments what you guys think about this. Whatever the answer is, it's irrelevant. Booga went ahead and found himself these guys, and I must say they're doing an excellent job so far. Their team play is top tier, and they are showing ability to dominate scrim tournaments. As of week one, they qualified for the FCS, placing fourth, and definitely have some serious potential. So now, let's head over to our number one spot. Okay, number one, let's go. We have the legends, the prodigies, Saf, Zayt, and Bizzle. Now, before people start to protest, let me explain to you why they deserve this spot. For those who don't know, Saf, Zayt, and Bizzle have been a force in the competitive scene since the very start. They were some of the only consistent champions who placed top 10 every single event. And if that isn't enough, they have the most LAN experience out of anybody. This team shreds fear in any opposing trio they come against. I remember Booga saying in Twitch Rivals, don't go loot lake, and there's only one reason for him to have said that. It's the drop spot of Saf, Zayt, and Bizzle. Now let's talk a little bit about why this team is so formidable. We did a duo analysis of Saf and Zayt a while back, showing key elements why they win nearly every fight and consistently make it to endgame. I mean, it's actually kind of absurd. Even if these guys don't win, they still get top five placements almost all the time. They barely stream, so it makes pinpointing and learning their strategy a little bit tricky. Many of the outstanding teams choose not to stream their tactics, and I don't blame them. Another strong point this team has is their brain. While this may be dismissed by some, it's actually super critical to high-level Fortnite gameplay. At this point in the game, most players have caught up mechanically, so flashy moves and neat edits don't exactly win the game. At high-level gameplay, it's all about three different things, and that's all that matters. The first two, positioning and aim. This is probably the most important, because if you miss your shot, what's the point of everything else you did? If you've ever watched Saf, Zayt, and Bizzle, you'll notice their shots are deadly accurate. Some of the best players out there focus especially on aim because, let's be honest, it's the main factor. The aim is the single most crucial aspect. Why do you think Kovacs was created for aim and not building? The third most vital element which this trio has is positioning. Ever notice how when they drop or attack enemies, how they don't all land together? Yeah, exactly. A lot of teamfights revolve around angles and positioning, and if you get that part wrong, you could get wiped by an inferior team with better angles and positions. The final aspect is the strategy. Without this one, all your aim and mechanical skill go to waste. I mean, how many times have we seen absolute beasts panic and all their ability goes down the drain? Without the right strategy and knowing what to do, nothing else will save you. If you ever watched a video review of Zayt and Saf, they always have a plan B. If plan A fails, they result to their backup plan. 
An effective part of the pro play is having a second strategy to resort to. Now, of course, the situation may come where you can't do anything else, but those are situations most pro players don't get themselves into. Saf, Zayt, and Bizzle are clearly the best trio, and they've got the stats and achievements to back it up. I totally respect if you guys think otherwise, so let us know how your top five lists square off against ours, and I won't get salty about it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let us know what types of videos you guys would like to see next. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.